This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. G'day, I'm Victor Bray, and you're watching Storytellers at Competition Plus TV. We, we have a we have a drink in Australia called Bundaberg Rum, and it's made from sugar cane up in the in the, a lot of sugar cane grown up in the Bundaberg region. Um, it um, how do you put this nicely? It can have ill effects on certain people's um, um, ability to make sense. <laughs> I put it that way, and it can make you fight pretty good. You know, some people drink Bundy Rum, and they just will never drink it again. They get in so much trouble, wreck the house, or everything else that they do. So yeah, it does affect some people badly. Uh, so I, I drink it as a, you know, I love it as a, as a drink. I just drink it casually, you know, and responsibly sort of thing most of the time. But um, we had Scotty Cannon, <coughs> we had Scotty Cannon, young Scott Cannon over here. Um, I think it was '99. I'm not sure sure of the year, but uh, it was New Year's Eve of all things. Because obviously, while you know you guys are having your winter over there, we have our summer over here. So they're over here doing a, a series. Uh, and we're travelling around the country racing. They just got here, we're working on a car in the workshop here. And uh, Scotty then, we said, oh yeah, New Year's Eve, let's go get a, you know, a bit of liquor and, and uh, we'll have a couple of drinks and you know, celebrate New Year's Eve. So we go up the road and, and young Scott, I think he was 18 years old at the time, and uh, you know, he, he's certainly full of piss and vinegar at the time. He was you know real strapping young guy, real big and strong. And, and uh, so we were outside there. We got the, come home, having a couple of drinks, had a bit of a feed, you know, had a couple of drinks. and. I remember that the, the transport was backed in the end of the shed and Scott had got up the road and bought two bottles of Bundaberg rum, right? Well, I don't know, there's a, two bottles of Bundaberg rum is enough, enough to knock an African air, elephant out, you know? So Scott's got the back of the trailer there and I, I sort of said to him once, I said, um, hey Scott, you, you just go a bit easy on that stuff, right? It's really strong, it doesn't really agree with, me, with, with some people, you know? So he goes, oh, no, that's all right. He says, I, I, I drink the, um, I drink, uh, uh, you know, white liquor back home and, and brown liquor's, you know, nowhere near as strong as white liquor. I, I don't know nothing about it, but I mean, he, that, that was the question, that was the answer I got. And I said, okay, so he said, white liquor, brown liquor's really, you know, weak. So I thought, well, hang on, that's, you know, this is a bit different here. So he's drinking the Bundy. So he gets halfway through the first bottle, right? And he's drinking it straight. No one drinks Bundy straight. He gets halfway through the first bottle. And I went up and said, oh, Scotty, you know, Scott was, and uh, you know, I sort of said to Scotty a couple of times, you know, Probably shouldn't be drinking as fast as he's drinking it. I mean, he's getting a bit of a red glow. We call it the Bundy glow, you know. And he's starting to glow on that, you know. I was thinking to ourselves, what, what, what? He needs to slow down, Scott, really. He might not agree with him, you know. And he's starting to get a bit aggressive, you know. Anyway, he knocks the first bottle over. Straight in about the time I'd had one drink or two drinks, you know, mixing mine with Coke and he's just drinking it straight down. Anyway, I, I knew she was on then, so I, I went up and I said to him, completely innocently, completely innocently, I said, Oh, look, Scott, just go a bit easy on that, mate, because he's starting on the second bottle. And by this time, he's roaring. He's roaring, right? And he says, I said, Scott, just go a bit easy on it, mate. I said, that stuff really has a bad effect on some people. And I said, and I said, I remember the words clearly. I said, you know, some of the outlaw bikers and that are banned from actually drinking this at their club events because it doesn't affect some people good. And I said, they have a bit of a saying that says, uh, you know, if you don't fight when you're on Bundy Rum, you're a coward. Well, of course, his Bundy ears that he had at the time didn't hear the first part of the sentence. All he heard was, you're a coward. So the next minute, he says, get outside, throws the bottle on the ground, out the door, bro, you call me a coward, you bastard. So we're walking out the door, I get two steps out the door, he turns around, whacks straight in the mouth, and Scott, he's pissing himself laughing, right, thinking his 80-year-old kid's beating the snot out of me, right? So I'm going to get on top of him outside, and, and yeah, Bundy's got one of those things where he just doubles his strength. And uh, boy, I think it was Scotty's crew chief at the time, he saw me outside on holding Scotty down because I didn't, I didn't, he was, he, I think he's going to kill me. And he got holding him down and he, um, give me a boot in the head, you know, but get off my country, what are you doing? He, no one knew it was going, this will happen in seconds, you know, so we're outside there, Scotty's laughing his head off right over there going, give us a hand, stop him, stop him, you know, because he, he was fierce, he was, ooh, when you get that bundling in there, she's firewater, mate, she, she burns up them, them brain cells pretty fast, you know, and you just do anything to get out of it. So Scotty's standing there and he goes, oh, come and get up. And I says, oh, you're right, Scott, you can get up, mate, everything good, yeah, yeah. So Scotty's there laughing his head off, right? <laughs> Scott stands up and, and Scotty's there next to him, said something to him, so young Scott's just gone whack, big coat hanger straight under Scotty's chin, right, knocked him on his ass. 
next minute Scotty's gone, you bastards, and then he's jumped on him too, so then he, he, it took me and Big Scotty, oh, 20 minutes to get him under control on the ground, we got his head in the grass, we don't want to be nasty to him, but we've got no choice, this guy's going to take the both of us out, so I got him on the ground, and he got his head on the ground, he's frothing at the mouth really bad, you know, and, and he's making animal noises and stuff like that because he was he, he just drunk too much bunny rum and uh, it, it wasn't good for him you know he hadn't he had a bad reaction to it so that was it mate he um he uh, after about 20 minutes I think we tied him to the clothesline or something like that for a while till he calmed down and oh he, he had a, he took two great big chunks out of Scotty took two great big chunks out of him he gave me a black eye and a busted up arm, you know, arm and. Oh, he's a strong boy, mate. He'd give us some. Anyway, the next morning, obviously, the Bundy Rum also has this thing on uh, memory loss. Next morning, he knew nothing about it. He didn't know what's going on. So uh, that was crazy, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring, your, bring your madman to Australia and beat us up. That'd be great. Good work. But Scotty was really, I, I just never forget Scotty laughing his ass off until he got one, too. <laughs> and it was, we were both on top of young Scott for ages trying to control him. It was bad. You know, it was really bad. But yeah, he, he, we didn't hurt him. And, you know, he hurt us. That was about how it turned out. And the follow-up to that story was he went back to the States and he must have been telling his mates the same thing. And I'd left a couple of um, bottles of Bundy. I was travelling back and forwards a bit then. I left a couple of bottles of Bundy rum in Scott's motorhome. Scotty's motorhome, right? And, uh, and he'd tell his mates, oh, this is what happened in Australia. Me and this, uh, my dad and this other big fella had to control me. So he didn't know nothing about it. He couldn't remember it. And they all going, oh, yeah, yeah, bullshit, you know, bullshit, bullshit. And, Anyway, so he goes one day, he says, when he's always made to this, oh, God, drink this Bundy here, I'll show you how it works. <laughs> so he knocked this bottle of Bundy over, right? And all his, and I said, I had to go for you. He goes, oh, it didn't go well again. And he said, it didn't go well again, don't think. And they were at a, um, oh, some sort of, it was a restaurant or something there. Anyway, they had a restaurant, he said, and they got kicked out, he got locked up for the night and beat four or five of his mates up and stuff. So I said, dude, so, so where, where do you sit with the Bundy right now? He goes, never, ever will I put another drop of that crap in my mouth.